שדו בעדקום, יעל פלשטין שדו בעדקום. מה ודעתקום, רחלת פלשטין, מה ודעתקום. אילי, נטבין תקי פאדר תעישי, ובייתק מוסטאוטנין, או חווליקי מוסטאוטנין, ודיימק מוסטאוטנין, וראקי מוסטאוטנין, וכיף מה בתחפי. Assalamu alaikum. The aim of this video is to explain the vocabulary and expressions used in reports and documentaries in the media, especially these days because of what's happening in Gaza. Let's start with the first one. Settlers. A settler is someone who goes to live in a country where not many people like them. Or Jews gathered from every corner of the world to live in Palestine. We call them settlers. Zionist. A Zionist is someone who supports the establishment of a state for the Jews in Israel. In 1905, the Seventh Zionist Congress chose Palestine to establish a Jewish national home after considering Uganda and Argentina. Justify. To justify is to give an acceptable explana explanation for something others think unreasonable. Something doesn't work and you try to justify why it didn't work to give reasons. Next word, slogan. A slogan is a short phrase that is easy to remember and is used by advertisers or politicians. The happiest place in the world is Disneyland slogan. There's a famous saying, the bride is beautiful but married. They could not bring themselves to accept that. So how could they justify people from the outside coming to settle in a country where people were already living? At the time, a slogan was spread across the world. A land without a people for a people without a land. That was the great big lie. A testimony is a formal statement saying that something is true. You witness a crime on the street and you go to court or to the police and give your testimony to describe what you saw. A witness is someone who sees and describes an accident or a crime. When we talk about contemporary, we refer to the present time. Commercial is related to business. A commercial bank, we say a commercial center. Infrastructure is the basic system a country or organization needs to work properly. For example, when it comes to a city, infrastructure would be electricity, water supplies, railroads, highways, streets, and all the services citizens need to live a normal life. Here, historians and personal testimony by contemporary witnesses argue that, far from being an empty wilderness, Palestine was a vibrant Arab country with a developing commercial and community infrastructure. Jerusalem is the main city in Palestine. It has one of the most important landmarks for Muslims, which is Al-Aqsa Mosque, trading hub an important commercial and business center. So in the video, it says one of the Palestinian cities was a trading hub. There was a lot of commerce, there was a lot of trade, there was a lot of business done in that city. A railway is a system of tracks along which trains run. Railroad is British. Next word is port, an important commercial and business center in the sea where ships anchor. Jerusalem was becoming an important commercial center, as were the ports of Gaza and Jaffa. They combined to turn Palestine into a trading hub with Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. These old trading records in the Jerusalem archives are evidence of its business activity. Jerusalem exported soap to Egypt, Italy, and Greece through Gaza grain to Egypt, Rhodes and Dubrovnik through Jaffa, cotton to France and Izmir, and antiques and religious gifts to Istanbul, Italy, Portugal and Spain. Gaza and Jaffa also imported rice and fabrics from Egypt, textiles from Istanbul, glassware from China, shawls from India and lead from France and the Netherlands in Europe. Through trade, Palestinian cities kept pace with development in the rest of the world in the late 19th century. Palestine also developed a transport infrastructure, 
and built a railway network to connect Jerusalem and other towns and cities with the ports. Industrial, relating to the large-scale production of goods. From industrial, that's an adjective, we have industry. And industry is the production of things in factories. Expansion. To expand is to increase or grow. Jaffa was the main port of Ottoman Palestine, but it was rapidly overtaken uh, by Haifa, which in 1905 uh, was uh, achieved a, a very important step forward with the uh, arrival of a branch of the Hejaz railway uh, that was from Damascus to Dera in southern Syria and the, it, it, it was extended to Haifa. So after, after that you could travel from, from, uh, by railway to, from Haifa to Damascus and to Medina in the modern day uh, Saudi Arabia. And the significance of that was it linked up maritime routes at an age of, in an age of European colonial expansion and industrial expansion to overland routes, which, um, and that was later used to connect to places as far away as uh, Kirkuk in, uh, in northern Iraq, uh, which is obviously an oil uh, 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 producer to, uh, to the wider world. lurk beneath the surface, to wait quietly and secretly to do something wrong. So the Israeli occupation was lurking beneath the surface, threatened the very existence, to harm or destroy something completely. Palestinian society showed every sign of rising to the challenges of the 20th century. But always lurking beneath the surface was the promise that the British had made to the Zionist movement to support the founding of a homeland for the Jewish people. And this would soon threaten not just the development, but the very existence of Palestine itself. Emerging cultural life in an early state of development of cultural life. Host an Olympic event to provide the place and everything needed for an Olympic event to take place. A hundred years ago, Palestine was a very different place compared with today. It was under British control or mandate, and there were those who suggested it was just an empty land. But in fact, cities like Jerusalem had an established commercial sector, transport networks, and an emerging cultural life. They began to attract Arab intellectuals, writers, and artists, and interest grew in developing new media like cinema and filmmaking. People were also getting interested in sport and hosting international events and competitions. The municipality of Jaffa discussed a plan to host an Arab Olympic event, while Palestinian athletes won international championships. Ottoman refers to the Ottoman Empire in Turkey that controlled most of the world in the past. Reforms are changes made to improve a system. So these are changes that are made during the time of the Ottoman Empire, which was ruling Palestine at that time. Economic growth, improvement relating to trade and management of money. Ottoman reforms encourage the, if you like, the, uh, the growth of European interest, certainly capital, and, and trade and communications. And that, of course, led to uh, growth in Jerusalem, Jaffa in particular, and, uh, and Haifa. Uh, economic growth was uh, also driven. Sykes-Pico Agreement. An agreement is an official document that people sign to show that they have agreed to something. And this agreement was signed by the British and the French to divide the Arab world. Mandatory Palestine. Mandatory comes from the word mandate. Mandate is the power given to one country to govern another country. Britain 
was given the mandate to control Palestine. World War I reshaped the geography of the Middle East. The Ottoman Empire was defeated. With the exception of Turkey, the Middle East was carved up and managed by Western powers. The Sykes-Picot Agreement, a secret treaty between France and Britain, assigned Palestine to the British, making it mandatory Palestine. Balfour Declaration is a promise to give Palestine to the Jews to establish Israel. Balfour represented the British government. Colonist, someone who settles in a new colony, which is a country controlled politically by another powerful country. Like what happened to Palestine, it was controlled by Britain. So Palestine was a British colony. People in this colony are called colonists. The British wanted to guarantee a Western presence in the area. In November 1917, British Foreign Secretary Arthur James Balfour wrote an open letter to Lord Lionel Walter Rothschild, one of the leaders of the Zionist movement. Balfour wrote, His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people, and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine. The Balfour Declaration is the declaration of a colonist offering someone else a gift that he had no right to give. In 1917, just when the British government embraced the Zionist project to create a national home for the Jews in Palestine, Palestinians represented 98% of the population. Dual obligation. Dual means double or two way, two side, two parts. Obligation, legal duty. Partition Palestine. Partition can be a noun and it can be a verb. Here it's a verb and it means to divide Palestine into two states, a state for the Arabs and a state for the Jewish. Britain was granted a mandate for Palestine at a conference in the northwest Italian city of San Remo in April 1920. This was approved by the League of Nations in July 1922, but there was a crucial contradiction within the mandate. Members of the Zionist movement, including the British politician Herbert Samuel, attended the San Remo conference and the Balfour Declaration was incorporated into the British mandate. But the British also had a dual obligation to govern and conduct policy in Palestine on behalf of both Jews and Arabs. In reality, however, the San Remo Conference tipped the balance significantly one way. But that was a hugely important uh, uh, landmark for the Zionist movement. So by 1920, when the San Remo Conference was held, of course, that was also celebrated as an important victory on the basis of the Balfour Declaration promise uh, and also because the Zionists were working hard to ensure that the terms of the Balfour Declaration would be incorporated into the terms of the mandate itself. So that was a, a, a hugely important movement, moment and it can be compared only with the UN decision in 1947 to partition Palestine into Jewish and Arab states. Next word is delegate. It's delegate as a noun. If it's a verb with the same spelling, we pronounce it as delegate. To delegate is to ask someone or to give someone the authority or the power to do something. A delegate is someone chosen to take decisions for a group, to office, to start in an important job or position. Herbert Samuel was one of the Zionist movement delegates at the San Remo conference. He was then appointed British High Commissioner for Palestine in July 1920, but before he took office, he visited the region. Some of his meetings were minuted and published in the press. The surviving records shed light on the tense relationship between Samuel and Palestinian leaders, as well as his attempts to persuade them to share land with Jewish immigrants. I see a group of Jews in your country who can help you construct your land and teach you the economics in a good, harmless way. 
Our country has enough qualified and willing people to properly invest in our land and elevate our state's affairs without the intervention of the Jews. But if the Jews came to your country, they'd build the unplanted lands, which are an excess to your people's needs. There are no unplanted lands in our country, except for some small areas that are unfit for agriculture. We will definitely have to plant and invest in them in the future because our people reproduce in big numbers. Thank God. Each one of us has an average of seven children. We must prepare lands for them. We have heard that you are one of the founding Zionist leaders. I'm not one of the Zionists. We know that you're one of the key Zionist leaders. You've organized your finances. Now that you've seen our situation and heard our wishes, you must have realized that our land doesn't fit other people and that we won't let the Zionists in as long as we live. Jewish immigration, the process of entering another country to live permanently. And that's when Jews started leaving their countries and entering Palestine to live in Palestine permanently, to colonize, to occupy Palestine. Cosmopolitan city is a city that has people from many different parts of the world. New York, for example, is a cosmopolitan city because it has people from different ethnic groups, different racial backgrounds. The most powerful country on earth had promised to create a national home for the Jewish people. Uh, so whatever the progress that Palestine had made under the Ottomans or under the British, uh, it was overshadowed certainly by, um, by what was happening politically. So for example, uh, Jaffa, uh, which was the most cosmopolitan city uh, in Palestine, it had Arabs as well as Jews, uh, living there, was well known for its uh, uh, cinemas, for example, during the mandatory period. Uh, clearly, there were, uh, there was a strong local culture and so on and so forth. But everything was dominated by the politically challenging situation of the British having conquered the country and promised it to promised to turn it into a national home for another people. It, it, Jewish immigration became the main plank of the British mandate. Most East European Jews uh, wanted to go to America or to Western Europe. 1925, more Jews went to Palestine than to America because of restrictions on Jewish immigration. So, uh, for example, by 1935, which was the peak of Jewish immigration during the mandate, uh, immigration reached uh, 65,000 in just one year. What's more, the British mandate allowed Jewish immigrants to become Palestinian citizens. Palestinians were never consulted about these things. And again, it's to do with the overall strategy promoting the idea of a Jewish national home in Palestine from 1920 onwards. Uh, it was formalized in the mandate, which came into force in 1923, and it granted Palestinian citizenship to Jewish immigrants, absolutely. Increased violence. More behaviors that are intended to harm others. For example, people start shooting, killing, stealing, robbing. Armed Jewish groups. Jewish groups that are carrying weapons. In December 1947, the British announced that their mandate for Palestine would end five months later. This led to increased violence by armed Zionist Jewish groups. On the 14th of May, 1948, the day before the mandate ended, the head of the Jewish agency, David Ben-Gurion, proclaimed the establishment of the State of Israel. 
the new state incorporated 78% of mandatory Palestine. Over 700,000 Palestinians were forced from their homes and became refugees in neighboring countries. Britain's mandate officially ended and troops returned home. The British commander-in-chief symbolically handed over command of the land to Zionist leaders. Pressure can be a noun and it can be a verb. In this part of the video, it is used as a verb. And it means to try to make someone do something by making them feel it's their duty. Pressure someone to do something. The UN resolution. The UN stands for the United Nations. Resolution is a decision, a decision made by the United Nations. While the UN committee was preparing its report, the Jewish agency pressured the British to open Palestine's borders to Jewish immigrants. The paramilitary group Haganah chartered an old ship naming it Exodus 1947. In July, it arrived outside Haifa with 4,500 Jewish immigrants from Central Europe. The resolution of the Duck Committee for Palestine was adopted by 33 votes, 13 against, 10 abstentions. The UN resolution proposed dividing Palestine into two states, one Jewish and the other Arab, with Jerusalem under international control. Strategic importance is something that is important to execute a plan. Blow up houses with explosions. Explosions are things that destroy because they explode. To blow up houses with explosions to destroy houses. Massacre is genocide, when a lot of people are killed violently like the one that happened in Palestine, the Yassin massacre and other massacres that happened later. Flee out of fear for their lives. To flee is to run away. Out of fear means because of fear. To protect their lives, they fled. To leave somewhere quickly to escape danger. Deir Yassin was a small Arab village with 600 residents, located five kilometers from Jerusalem. It held no strategic importance for the Haganah. But two offshoot Zionist paramilitary groups, Iagun and Lehi, attacked the village anyway. The operation on the morning of April 9th was poorly coordinated. The Palestinians fought back, killing five men. Iagun and Lehi doubled down, seizing house after house and blowing some up with explosives. Nearly 200 were killed in the massacre. This was a new situation. They tried to use organized actions to propel people to flee, for example, by murdering people, like what happened in Dir Yassin or other villages and cities like Lod. People fled out of fear for their lives. Obstacle to peace. Obstacle is something that makes it difficult to achieve peace. Another word is hurdle something that blocks peace. The International Court of Justice, the court of law of the UN. It's located in The Hague in the Netherlands. Depending on your perspective, <laughs> these settlements are either a natural extension of the Israeli state or the single biggest obstacle to peace in the Middle East. Settlers believe all of Palestine is part of the Jewish homeland and justify their land grabs in the name of security and, of course, the Bible. The International Court of Justice says all of Israel's settlements are illegal. Archaeology is the study of ancient societies, their buildings, graves and tools. Archaeologists dig in the ground to find these buildings or information about old societies. Theology is the study of religious ideas and beliefs. <laughs> The children learn, yes, it's a shame that people die, but it's not that important. What is important is that we will have a state. I will kill for the idea to be a Jewish state in a Jewish land. There's nothing here. There's no grocery store, no gas station, no 
hospital, no neighbors. Good. Good. According to me, that's what I dream of. Everything is belong to us by history, by archaeology, by theology. Besieged Gaza Strip. We all know Gaza. To besiege a city is to surround the city by military force until its people let you take control. The noun is siege. Besiege is the verb. Blow up the high-tech fence. This is what happened when Hamas groups blow up the high-tech fence. A fence is a wall that separates two areas. There is high technology used to protect the fence, to destroy a fence by explosion. Next word is military base. It's a place where people in a military organization work and live. Civilians are people who are not in the military or the police. To rally behind Israel is to support Israel. Bombarded Gaza with airstrikes. Airstrikes are missiles fired by airplanes or warplanes. To bombard is to attack a place for a long time using fighter jets and missiles. On October 7th, 2023, Palestinian fighters belonging to the group Hamas broke out of the besieged Gaza Strip. After blowing through Israel's high-tech fence, they attacked several of the surrounding military bases and overran them, before moving on to Israeli communities near the border. At least 1,300 Israelis were killed and dozens were captured and taken into Gaza to be used in a future prisoner swap. Many of the dead were deemed civilians under international law and children were also among those killed. Many governments have rallied behind Israel, which has already bombarded Gaza with airstrikes, flattening neighborhoods and killing at least 1,900 Palestinians at the time of this recording. Israel has also cut off water, electricity, fuel, and food to the people there and declared a total siege. So why did Hamas attack Israel? Um, and then we crossed the border and we were like about two kilometers from Gaza. I already saw the houses. And then they told me to, to go. They released us. Do you know why? Um, I don't know why everyone is asking me that. I really don't know why. I don't know. I thank God for that. But I don't know why they saved my, the kid's life and my life. They just told me to go. Hello, Banglit. I'm and one באנגלית, אל תדאגי, אני מוסלמי, אנחנו לא נפגע בכם. זה תפס אותי ב... מצד אחד בהפתעה, מצד שני זה הוריד לי הרבה לחץ, וישבתי עם הילדים שלי, והמחבר... Recognize Israel. To accept or admit something is true. That's the meaning of recognize. So, you accept Israel as a state not an occupation force. To commit to something, to say that you will definitely do something. In this case, negotiations. Negotiations means talks. Colonial settlement expansion. So the Israelis are colonists and settlers. They're driving Palestinians away from their homes and they live in the homes themselves. International legitimacy. Legitimate means correct or lawful. The ability to make others see your actions as acceptable by the law. We, the National Movement of Palestine, the PLO, have found a different path 30 years ago. We have committed to what the world asks us. Recognize Israel, commit to negotiations and nonviolence, and to international legitimacy and resolution. Israel was expected to do one thing only roll back its occupation, stop its colonial settlement expansion. Not one day it did so, killing the, prospect, the prospects of a two-state solution. And the world was expected to do one thing, Christian, uphold international law equally on everybody, on Ukraine, on Palestine, and the world fails to do that. So now no what? accountability. Now, every single political avenue is blocked, every single legal avenue for us is blocked, like the ICJ, the International Court of Justice. Their land is confiscated to officially take private property away from someone. Israelis confiscated Palestinians' homes and farms. Apartheid, a place in which some people have full political rights, while others are forced to live in separate areas, like the apartheid that happened in South Africa between white people and black people. White people had the rights to do everything, black people didn't have any rights whatsoever. We're having this conversation because Israelis have seen what they have seen today, but my people see this every day. 
every single day. Palestinians are targeted, killed, arrested, rounded, their land is confiscated, their holy places are desecrated. Not only Muslims, but Christians, you have been following what is happening in the Al-Aqsa Mosque and in our uh, uh, Christian uh, churches, the spitting on uh, Christian worshippers. Our people have been seeing apartheid being enforced on them over the last years, and the land is being taken, and the hope for a political solution that will fulfill their rights dissipating and the fall. This is what we need to discuss. Fine. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I know, but I mean... Uh, Statesmanship. Skill in managing public affairs. Wholesale destruction. Destruction affecting almost everything and everyone. Wholesale means on a large scale. Legitimate birthright. Correct things that you are legally allowed to do or have because of the country you belong to. Self-determination, the right of the people of a country to choose their own government. You see, instead of learning the lessons, what I heard today from many international actors, including from the US and the UK, is doubling down on the very same mistakes and failure what is the option? that has led us to where we are. What is the option right now? What the, happens? The, the, Israel doesn't respond to Hamas? The, 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 the alternative is statesmanship, is courage the equal application of international law. We are not lesser of human beings. We are not the children of a lesser God. We are equal as all nations. It's been 75 years, 75 years of oppression, of wholesale destruction. You've seen what happens in Gaza. Wait until tomorrow and see the thousands who will lose their lives and their livelihoods. Enough is enough. The only solution is respect people's legitimate birthright of self-determination, the right to return to their properties, the right to establish a state of their own, and stop dodging this. Stop finding, you know, detours around it. There is no such a thing as detour. Peace can only be struck with us, the Palestinians, not with anyone else, because Israel is in odds with us, because Israel has taken our land, because Israel is subjecting us and oppressing us, not any anybody else. And bravery from the international community requires the equal application of international law. Israel, as an occupying power, has a full responsibility to protect the civilians under its own occupation, right? It is, this is international law. Israel has the full responsibility to make sure no civilian is harmed. It's been doing the opposite for 75 years. Hold hostage. To keep someone a prisoner and tell your enemy does what you demand them to do. International Criminal Courts is a court of law that has the authority to deal with people accused of crimes against humanity. Do you, you, worry, do you worry that that statement that you're making is completely compromised when Palestinian militants, terrorists, bomb Israeli civilians, kill them, capture them, hold them hostage. No. Because, How do you keep no, the moral no, high ground in that case? We keep the moral high, high ground by sticking to international law, by reverting to international judicial system, by seeking the ruling of the International Criminal Court. Let international judges come to Palestine, the occupied Palestinian territory, and rule rule and we will accept the ruling if we commit any mistakes or crimes we will accept it but everybody knows it's israel that has been violating every provision of international law and our common human decency secretary general of the un this is the most important official in the united nations hell on earth a very difficult place to live in things may have been calm and normal for israelis until then for palestinians daily life was intolerable pain in fact, for 16 years, Gaza has been under an Israeli siege so severe that it's often called the world's largest open-air prison. The Secretary General of the United Nations has described Gaza as hell on earth. And way back in 2012, the UN warned that if Israel's policies in Gaza didn't change, this tiny strip of land that's one of the most densely populated places on earth would become unfit for human living by 2020. It's now 2023. And in fact, analysts who had been paying attention were trying to sound the alarm, that things were getting worse, that the status quo was getting more and more untenable, that an explosion was inevitable. Humanitarian catastrophe, an event in which there is a lot of suffering, destruction and death. Humanitarian is from human, unimaginable trauma, an upsetting experience that affects you for a long time. For the 2.3 million Palestinians who live in Gaza, the 16-year siege means that Israel controls basically everything about their lives, and it has created a humanitarian catastrophe for them. 
The economy is devastated because Israel limits Gaza's trade with the outside world, leaving most of the population unemployed. The health sector has also been in crisis, with medicines frequently running out and patients denied Israeli permits to leave for life-saving health care. And electricity only lasts a few hours a day because Israel limits the amount of fuel let into Gaza. At one point, official documents showed that Israel calculated the number of calories allowed into Gaza, just enough to keep people from starving. Nearly half of Gaza's population is under 18. That means most of the people living there have never been able to leave Gaza. They've never stepped foot in Jerusalem or met a fellow Palestinian from the occupied West Bank. And they've survived several major attacks, leaving them with unimaginable trauma. Tens of thousands of homes and buildings were targeted and destroyed by Israel during these assaults, which left thousands of Palestinians dead. For example, in the summer of 2014 alone, at least 2,100 Palestinians, including at least 500 children, were killed by Israeli bombardment. In that conflict, 72 Israelis were killed, 66 of them soldiers. Despite some international criticism, Israel has never faced serious calls to end its siege on Gaza. In 2018, tens of thousands of Gazans tried to break the siege by marching non-violently onto the boundary fence with Israel every Friday for almost two years. They were met with gunfire. For weeks, Israeli soldiers shot at those attempting to get close, resulting in hundreds of deaths and thousands of injuries, including medics and journalists. Even before Hamas took control of Gaza, Israel had subjected the territory to a closure since the 1990s. This meant that Palestinians could rarely enter or exit Gaza unless they had a rare Israeli permit. This policy is part of a larger Israeli military occupation of Gaza and the West Bank that's now lasted more than half a century. Multiple human rights groups around the world have found that Israel actually runs a system of apartheid. The most right-wing government, right-wing people, support the ideas and beliefs of capitalism, as opposed to left-wing politicians. Ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians, the act of forcing people to leave an area because of their racial and or national group. And if they don't leave, you kill them. That's called ethnic cleansing. The current Netanyahu government, the most right-wing and anti-Arab in Israel's history, includes leaders who have openly called for the renewed ethnic cleansing of Palestinians and the destruction of entire Palestinian towns. In 2023 alone, they've incited several attacks on Palestinian villages in the West Bank. Defend their property to protect things you possess or own. Palestinians try to defend their property, their houses, their homes, their farms. Rubber-coated bullets are made of rubber. They hurt, but they don't kill. Tear gas is gas used by the police to control crowds. Armed Israeli settlers smashed homes, burned cars, and set fire to fields. When Palestinians tried to defend their property, Israeli forces shot at them, both with live fire and rubber-coated bullets, as well as tear gas. Israeli politicians and settlers have also repeatedly entered the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, the third holiest site in Islam, where Israeli forces have attacked Palestinian worshippers. By the way, they've been open about their attempts to destroy the mosque and build a new Jewish temple atop it. And the number of Palestinians killed by Israeli soldiers and settlers in the West Bank hit a 20-year high in 2023. Apocalyptic means connected with great destruction. Officially ran out of fuel, announced to not have oil to produce energy. Fuel is oil or anything that produces energy. Death toll is going to climb. To climb is to increase. Death toll is the total number of people who are killed in an accident or in a war. Fire jets are planes, artillery, large guns, tanks as well. And warships are ships in the sea that are designed to fight. Back in Gaza, things look apocalyptic. Israel's defense minister has ordered fuel, electricity, and even water to be cut off, saying his government is dealing with, quote, human beasts. The only power plant in Gaza has officially run out of fuel, leaving 2.3 million people with no electricity and in the dark. With fighter jets, artillery, and warships under his command, it's expected that the already massive Palestinian death toll is only going to climb. Also keep in mind that Gaza is under a blockade, which means when the bombs drop, Palestinians are trapped there with nowhere to flee and no bomb shelters to go to. Israel had previously launched large-scale wars against Hamas in Gaza in 2008, 2012, 2014, and 2021 with the stated goal of stopping Hamas. But while these wars inflicted catastrophic damage on Gaza's civilian population and infrastructure, they clearly did not stop Hamas. 
a military solution has not worked. Israeli journalist Gideon Levy just wrote in Haaretz, Israel can't imprison two million Gazans without paying a cruel price. And Levy is onto something. What's missing in all of this context is the root cause of it all, a deeply violent apartheid system and an occupation that robs Palestinians of their land, freedom, and right to self-determination. Meanwhile, the world does little to push Israel to end this system and instead often provides it with the aid and cover to maintain it instead. The sound of sirens and strikes. A siren is a piece of equipment that makes very loud warning sounds. Used on police cars, fire engines, or ambulances, strikes, are explosions that are meant to kill people. The sound of chaos is relentless. Chaos is disorder. And relentless means endless, something that never stops. Passes out in shock. To pass out is to faint in shock. So the mother fainted after she saw her kid. Many are confirmed dead. Many are reported dead for sure. You can't hear yourself think. It's not just the noise of the sirens and the strikes. The sound of the chaos in between is just relentless. Pure panic everywhere you look. This little boy was pulled out alive, his face blackened. His rescuer rushes to his mother. But before she can embrace her boy, she passes out in a shock. Any car becomes an ambulance. This woman is driving off before the boot can be shot. We've been told to get out, but where do we go? And how do we get there? There are more than two million people living here. Almost half are children. Families are rushing, trying to make plans. Every second matters. Gaza is under a complete siege. No water, no food, no electricity, and no escape. It's too hard. Some almost give up. But you can't stand still for long. Please, my family, they're just kids. We are not strangers to war, but how it feels this time. It's hard to find the wars. It feels like the world is collapsing. Many are confirmed dead. Even more are missing. This woman cannot find her son. I haven't heard from him since Saturday. I haven't heard anything from him. Nothing. Here is the family. They're gathering all together, also in a place far away from the window. I was trying to explain things, but I think you can hear them now. I'm walking right now close to my home, close to my building, but I swear I couldn't recognize the streets. I'm also afraid walking because any minute anything may explode. This afternoon I met Plestia on the street close to where her home once was. Now it's not even safe to walk. Like as you can see here, this building caught a fire as well other than the bombardments that happened. So it's not safe, nothing is safe, literally. <laughs> Palestine, 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 Palestine,